and grow YouTube show. Let's talk about how do bulbs grow and when to plant them? Cause I feel like that gets confusing for, you know, all I've done is edible gardening. So I go, I buy my basil when it warms up, I plant it in the garden. It grows for the summer. That's been, you know, my experience. So with bulbs, there's more of a strategy with fall and winter. So, so how does that work? And, and why is that important? Well, it depends on the bulb. So within bulbs, there are fall flowering bulbs and spring flowering bulbs and summer flowering bulbs. And generally you plant those things ahead, a season ahead of the time you expect them to flower. So if you're looking for daffodils, tulips, jonquils, you plant all of those things in the fall. So for you, uh, for you, I suppose in, throughout New York, probably before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. get those things in the ground. The first thing they do underground is grow out a set of roots that you don't probably don't even see. And then they start to grow up in the spring and produce flowers in the late spring. If you are looking for summer flowering bulbs, um, dahlias, uh, crinums, amaryllis, gladiolus. Peonies? Hmm? Peonies? Uh, peonies are a little bit different. Oh, okay. Let's, let's get peonies for now. Okay. Um, we'll come back but to But dahlias, that. oh my God, the, the star of a cut flower garden. I feel like dahlias are amazing. Oh, exactly. And they're so easy. And they work in some, lots of them work in containers or in tiny gardens. But all of those things come on in the summer for foliage and flower. So you would plant them in the springtime when your soil is warming up. Mm -hmm. There's a whole nother set of bulbs, fall flowering bulbs, um, red, red spider lilies. Sometimes people call them British soldiers, fall flowering crocus. Those kind of things you can plant almost any time through early early spring through midsummer. Okay. So, so it it just depends on what you want, what you're looking for, and then of course one other option is that almost all of these things you can grow in a container inside. So if you're going to do that, then the time of year is um, is similar to what we just talked about but you can manipulate it a little bit more. Right, and let's dive into that because, so if you're planning it a season ahead, it's the temperature changes of the ground that's gonna trigger the, the bulbs to, to, to grow? Exactly. It's so that's for, why, huh? For, let me, I, you know, there's a cool word that I like a lot. Um, it's called geophyte. The word mm -hmm. is geophyte. So geophyte refers to all of these things. And what it means is earth lover. So it's important to remember with bulbs, the most important thing for their health and longevity is the conditions in the earth. Now, honestly, that's true for a lot of things, but for bulbs particularly. Got it. Okay. Um, so when we're trying, because I feel like I love the term, I mean, the term is forcing bulbs indoors. I love an amaryllis, a paper white, any type of blooming bulb indoors in the winter in New York in, in the winter. Cause we're, you know, I've got two feet of snow outdoors and there's nothing better than like a bloom, you know, forcing, a, forcing some bulbs in like a glass vase. And I feel like when you read about that online, it talks a lot about sticking them in the fridge. So I guess you're, you're replicating that. Yeah, but there, so there are a couple of ways to do that. If you buy your bulbs, um, you get them from a, a, a nursery center or get them mailed to you, your daffodils, jonquils, paperwise, amaryllis, um, scylla, hyacinth, all of those are easy things to force. So you can just stick the bulbs in the fridge. The way I like to do it is to pot them up, go ahead and pot them up before you put them in the fridge, and then just put all of those pots outside. And therefore, you're getting that cold treatment naturally without taking up your space in the fridge. So then when you're ready to force it, say Christmas, you just bring one of those pots in and the heat inside, the warming of the soil starts to force those things into flower. And it usually oh, takes, usually takes like idea. six weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. 
Um, um, I also am when, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I feel like I, uh, I take the easy route. And so normally I even buy them pre-potted at the nursery center that they've already gone through that conditioning. So I can just enjoy the blooming process, but exactly. yeah, I that's figured it. I'd ask for people who want to do a DIY setup. You know, you can also do some bulbs in water, like hyacinths. Um, you commonly see hyacinths have they're the only bulb that have a little special vase that's made for them. They're called mm -hmm. hyacinth vases, but you could take a hyacinth bulb and put it, you could put some marbles or some rocks in like a mason jar or a spaghetti jar or whatever, a little bit of water on the bottom, a couple of hyacinth bulbs, and they will pop right up and flower in that jar. And then you have that amazing scent. <laughs> right. Do 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 do